Hi, it's Drew at Finale Fireworks. In this video tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to update Finale inventory effect data using information from Finale 3D. Before we jump in, I want to talk a little bit about the applicability of this video because it doesn't apply to all users. If you use Finale 3D and you save your effects here in the effects window in the blue drop down list under My Effects, that's your personal online collection of effects. It's not a Finale inventory, and this video and the instructions shown in this video would not apply to you. Similarly, if you use an offline effect file that's stored locally on your computer with an FDB file extension, this video also would not apply to you. However, if you have a connected Finale inventory, such as I do here, or you have a shared company effects list, which is hosted on Finale inventory as a limited Finale inventory account, this video definitely applies to you. So in this example, I'm going to check uh, my inventory here, so I'll go ahead and select it. Here we can see the effects that are in my inventory, and these were downloaded and synchronized when I launched Finale 3D. Now, there's a couple reasons that you would want to make updates directly in Finale inventory as opposed to just making the updates in Finale 3D. Remember, if you just want to change some simple information or to even change a lot of information, you can do that directly in Finale 3D. You can change a description, a duration, a height, you can adjust it, you could even change a part number, pre-fire, etc. However, if you're looking to do a mass update, it's sometimes easier to do in Finale Inventory because Finale Inventory will allow you to import a column that includes the part numbers, which are called product IDs in Finale Inventory, and then only import the other field or column that you're specifically trying to update, which is not supported as well in Finale 3D. So that's one reason. Another reason is because you want to use these specific columns that I have displayed here and have data populated those in those in your inventory and also visible in Finale 3D. So those columns are category, EX number, CE number, and UN number. These columns cannot be updated from Finale 3D. That means that if I put information into the column and then synchronize, the information will not be saved to Finale inventory. I'll do a quick example. So let's change the category for this first item in my inventory to Articles Pyrotechnic. And then let's say we would like to remove the UN number for the fifth item here. So I'll hit delete. So now I've made two changes and I'll do sync with network. So as expected, Finale has calculated that there are changes to two rows. Okay, great. So I'll hit apply changes. All right, with the sync complete, I'll go ahead and hit okay. Now here we can see that the category that I entered for the first item and the UN number which I had deleted for the fifth item has returned. So this behavior is completely normal. It's simply the indicator that these particular columns cannot be updated from Finale 3D and uploaded to Finale Inventory. So I have to take a different approach. Now, you can use this approach to update any of the fields, but in today's demonstration, I'm just going to focus on the fields that can only be updated in Finale Inventory. So the first step is to go to File and then export, and then export effects for importing into Finale Inventory. What this is going to do is to create a spreadsheet with all of the columns and fields from the selected inventory or the inventory that it's displayed in the effects window at the right, with all of the proper column head headings and formatting to go directly into Finale Inventory. So it's a one-click thing, it takes care of everything for you. So I'll go ahead and run this, and then it already comes up with a name that matches my inventory, so I'll just go ahead and click Save. All right, now I wanna go ahead and open that spreadsheet that was exported, and here it is. So there's a lot of information here. Again, all of the columns and fields uh, that are available in uh, Finale 3D that are compatible with Finale Inventory are listed. One thing you'll notice right away, though, is that the column headings are slightly different than the column headings in Finale 3D. So for example, in Finale 3D, the part number is called part number, whereas the same data in Finale Inventory is called Product ID. So there are differences in the column names between the two. If you're interested in getting more information about the differences, and also if you have any difficulty comparing which column matches to which column in Finale Inventory versus Finale 3D, you can go to Finale3D.com, Documentation, Software Documentation, and then there's an article here called Column Names in Finale Inventory versus Finale 3D. This is a great article. It's a really great reference. And uh, the best part of it here is the table, which is, has a full list of the columns in, for Finale 3D, including their corresponding names in Finale Inventory. So here you can see part number is the name in Finale 3D, 
product ID, etc. for all the columns down. The other great thing is if you're curious about what information should go in a column or what a column is used for, there is uh, an explanation of each column here as well in this table. So that's a really great resource. So now we have our spreadsheet ready to import into Finale Inventory, but this is currently only the data that's in Finale 3D. So what we want to do is add those items that we're not able to add. So let's look for those columns. The first one was category. So we'll go ahead and just highlight that here. And then we had EX number, CE number, and what's called hazardous material in Finale Inventory is called UN number in Finale 3D. Let's go ahead and highlight these. And I'm just gonna highlight them to make them easier to see and locate. Now, most of the other information I don't need, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hide it just to make the example a bit easier to follow. Just hide these columns. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the column widths on the columns that I'm using just to make it a bit easier to see. Make the spreadsheet a bit wider. So here we have category, EX number, CE number, and hazardous material, which again is the same as UN number. Perfect. Now instead of entering data during the demonstration, I've actually got some data prepared here. So what I'm gonna do is just paste in the values that I'd like to have. Again, this is just something I prepared in advance um, and it is in a separate spreadsheet. So here we go. So now for the categories, I've chosen for some items uh, to categorize them as articles pyrotechnic, for other items, display fireworks, and for a few other items, consumer fireworks. I put in some example EX numbers, some example CE numbers, and then example UN numbers for some of these products. So now this data is ready to go. Now the only columns that I need to import are the ones that I'd like to change, plus the product ID or part number, so that it can be, that's the reference for the lookup to make sure that the correct uh, the correct information goes into the correct row in the database. So I don't need description anymore, which I may have needed in order to kind of reference when I was entering this information, but since I've got all, it all in there now, I can just hide this. So this is exactly what I need. Uh, notice like for the three inch rack, uh, I don't care about the category for that or any of the other information, so I've just left it blank. So right now I'm not going to include that when I do the copy operation. So the next step here is to select the data, including the column header rows, and then just do copy which is also control C as a keyboard shortcut. The next thing I wanna do is switch to a web browser and go to Finale Inventory. So you're gonna to go to the link that'll be specific to your Finale Inventory account, and that'll take you to the login screen. Once you log in, it'll bring you to the home screen. The next step is to go to View Products. On the View Products page, go to Import Products and then Import from Spreadsheet. This is one of my favorite features in Finale Inventory. All I have to do is do control V to paste from my keyboard or right click and do paste and all the information will come in and be matched up automatically. Just like that. So we can see there's 38 part numbers. We can see that the column headers are perfectly matched up. Uh, for example, if they weren't, you'd see a column would come in such as this where it would just say unassigned because if the column header in the spreadsheet did not match the column name or field name in Finale Inventory but they do, uh, and that's part of the beauty of that export function that we ran in Finale 3D. So this all looks good. The green indicates that these are all existing part numbers, which is what we'd expect, and the EX number, CE numbers, and hazard materials uh, information is great. However, there's one obvious problem here, which is the, all the red text. Now, that's because category is a very special case in Finale Inventory, and the, the, the red indicates that these categories actually will not be imported if we proceed. And the reason is because categories have to be specified in advance prior to importing them into Finale Inventory. So how do we do that? Go to the upper right hand corner and click on your company name or the name of your Finale Inventory account. Then go to the Products tab. And then on the Products tab, scroll down until you see Product Categories. Here you can see I've not entered any custom categories. So all I have is the stock categories that are kind of pre-populated as an example when I got my Finale Inventory account. And those are just not, they, those don't match the categories that I'm trying to import, which is why I'm getting the red text. I just need to go ahead and update those. So what I'll do is go ahead and select the ones that are here and change that out. So there's the first one, Articles Pyrotechnic. Number two, Display Fireworks. And number three, Consumer Fireworks. Now you can type in here, I'm just pasting in here because I have the information ready for this demo. Uh, if you have more categories, there's no problem. Uh, you can have as many categories 
as you need. You just keep adding as you add new categories below, uh, new categories will be added. So I'll just go ahead and go to the upper right here on this page and do save now. And it will save the changes. And now I have those custom categories. So now we can go back to the home screen, view products, import products, import from spreadsheet. And that brings us right back here where we can paste. So then all we need to do is go back to our spreadsheet with the items we'd like to paste in. I'll do control C on my keyboard to copy, control V on my keyboard here to paste. And now the red is gone. And that's because the categories that have, were created now match the categories that I'm trying to import. They always have to be a match. So this looks great. Uh, all the columns, the things I want to look at are that the columns are matched up and that uh, everything looks as expected and there's no data that's showing any kind of error. So I'll just go ahead and commit the import by clicking next. And then it lets me know the summary here that it's going to import 38 lines. Just go ahead and do commit. There we go, successful. So I'll click next. This takes me back to the, the products page and I can even see the data here uh, on the right hand side. Now, what I'd like to do next is look at that data in Finale 3D. So we'll go ahead and minimize inventory and we'll see, wow, the data really hasn't changed here. Well, that's just because we haven't synchronized or restarted Finale 3D, which would cause a synchronization to occur. So I'll just go to the blue dropdown list and do sync with network. All right, there we go. So click OK because the sync is complete. Now you'll see the categories, EX numbers, CE numbers, and UN numbers from my inventory have been populated with the exception of the three inch rack for which we did not specify any information. So this looks perfect. So we achieved our result of updating using the Finale inventory import process and uh, it looks pretty good. So uh, now that gives me the ability to uh, use the category as a filter. Uh, if you go to the blue gear menu, you can turn on and off filters. And I, for this example, I've turned on the category filter. So now, much like you can filter on subtype, you can do filtering on category. So it's just another great way to sort and filter your products to make it easier to design shows in Finale 3D. Uh, this, all the information in these columns is, of course, searchable using the search box as well. Uh, that's it for this demonstration on importing information in the Finale inventory from Finale 3D. I really hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out all the other great videos on the Finale 3D YouTube channel, and if you'd like to be notified as new videos come out, don't forget to subscribe.